Starting now, if you are ready, SIPC, if you are ready with your feet, you'll tell us when you are ready. Thank you very much. To the people at home, uh, all the various sectors of the economy, that are waiting for this presentation, we say good morning to all of you. The president spoke to a risk-adjusted approach to easing the lockdown. We have with us today Minister Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma and Minister Patel, who will speak to the details of this risk-adjusted approach to easing the lockdown. And before I even call them, can we indicate to all South Africans that the lockdown at level five still stands until the end of April, until the 30th of April. So the measures that we are going to speak to now only start kicking in from the 1st of May. So we just want all our people everywhere, wherever we are, to know that the lockdown as is at the moment still stands until the 1st of May. Uh, having said that, Minister Kosa Zanatla Zuma, the platform is yours, Minister. Also, as the minister comes, the slides that she will be speaking to will also be beamed to the people in our homes and everywhere we are, we are through the various television broadcasts. We will also try to use vernacular languages where it is appropriate. Thank you very much. Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Minister, Minister Patel, Acting DG for Health, and all the ladies and gentlemen of the media. They can't hear me. You can't hear me. Who, is, who, who can't hear me? SIPC can hear me. Hmm? Apparently, SIPC can hear me, so I have to take off the mask. Um, colleagues and members of the Fourth Estate um, and uh, fellow South Africans, good morning. <laughs> Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come and explain in more detail what the President announced, uh, that is the country, from uh, midnight on the 1st, will be going to level 4. But let me just say up front that, again, we stress that the world has never faced such an extensive pandemic uh, since the Spanish flu. And of course, we know that the Spanish flu in South Africa, uh, we lost more than 300,000 people, and we don't want to, to go there this time. And of course, pandemics do depress economies. 
and the depression of the economy will be probably more or the same as the Great Depression. But the Great Depression came over time. This time is coming very quickly. And of course, South Africa was already in a weak economic position. We were downgraded, and then we have this. So it's a combination of all those things. And despite the advance in technology, we don't have a cure or a vaccine yet for this pandemic. And so it means we have to rely on the measures that the World Health Organization has given to all of us. And if we don't stick to those, it will not help us because now we're going to be moving to level four. Level four means the lockdown is still there, but there will be a few things that will, be, that will change. We should not think that when we move for level four, it means the lockdown is gone, no. The lockdown is still there, there'll just be a few changes, but what is important is that there will be more people and more companies opening up and more people going to work. That's basically the major change. The rest, more or less, remains the same. And of course, we are taking all these measures to try and make sure that the curve of infection, the speed of the spread of infection is not high so that the curve does not overwhelm our health services. Because if more people, many people get infected at the same time, there'll be more people who need hospitals at the same time, and there'll be even more people who will need hospitals and ICU beds at the same time. And if that happens, our health service will be overwhelmed and our people will not be able to get the necessary treatment that they do need. And we must bear in mind also that in this epidemic, nobody can say, I'll keep myself healthy. Our health is very interlinked. What I do may affect your own health. What you do, you may affect other people's health. So this epidemic is showing us how our lives are so interlinked. And that's why the president and the cabinet in the country has taken these aggressive interventions so that we don't get to a point where our health services are overwhelmed by the numbers that are infected and by the numbers that need hospitalization. And of course, our, the virus has also exposed our deep, deep fault lines in South Africa. Ex they've exposed the issues of hunger. It has exposed poverty, unemployment, inequality. It has also exposed our special planning that we inherited from apartheid and we haven't really changed uh, in, a, in a critical way. So all these things contribute to how we must behave and how we must deal with this uh, pandemic. And let me also say upfront that if we move down to level four, which we will do by Friday, and we do not stick to the conditions, to the restrictions, to the public health conditions, and the virus starts speeding up in terms of more people getting infected faster, we will not, the government will have no option but to move very swiftly back to level five. So it doesn't mean that if we move to level four, if we stick to all the things that need to be done, all of us collectively, then we may be able to hold on on level four and eventually get to level three. But if we don't, whether it's individuals 
collectives, companies, because if companies also don't stick to what they are supposed to do, and the infection in a company, the company might close. And if the numbers go up, we go back to level five. If the numbers remain stable, we may remain to level five, and if they start showing a decline, we may go to level three. So it's all in our hands, South Africans. Depends on what we do, whether we stick to what we are supposed to do or not. So we must make that choice ourselves. So there are things that are going to remain in place. And I want to put those up front so that we understand that we, it's still a lockdown, but an easier lockdown. So things like interprovincial travel will still not be allowed, except under exceptional circumstances, like people returning to work if they are in the, if, if their sector is open or their company is open, or people going to funerals under strict conditions. Uh, so interprovincial travel is still not allowed. Or people coming back to school, universities when they do open. But other than that, you remain where you are. You remain at home, except if you are going to work, or you are going to buy essential goods, or you are going for medical. Visiting is still not allowed. You can not visit your friends, visit your neighbors, visit your relatives. That is still not allowed. Exercise will be allowed, but under very strict conditions. Things like gyms will remain closed, organized sports or walking or jogging is not allowed. We will put very strict regulations under which exercise can be done. So I just want to put that up front, that it's not the end of the lockdown, it's the easing, it's the risk adjusted approach. It's not just lifting the lockdown, but because we need the economy to start working and the wheels of the industry to start grinding, we are opening and Minister Patel will explain how this will work. But let me just show you also where um, I've, I've said about this, but I think having said all this, our approach should not be that we should not feel overwhelmed by all this, but instead we should approach this coronavirus as a challenge to be met by all of us collectively and not a threat to be feared. And we must meet this challenge collectively. So I would also just want to move to maybe explaining where the country is in terms of the infections. You'll see a map of South Africa with different colors. And, and numbers, the numbers are just the districts or the metros. We've allocated every district and every metro a number. But the colors are the ones that we must watch out for. The red ones, the red spots, you can see a little red spot around Cape Town can see a little red spot around Nelson Mandela Bay, a little red spot al al around the Buffalo City Metro. You can see a red spot around the Teguini. You can see a red spot around Gauteng, especially Jobek and the Guruleni and the Pit in, in, in Pretoria. You can see a red spot in Mangaum. 
Those are where the numbers are biggest. We may say those are the epicenters. So that, that is why we do not want and we are still restricting interprovincial movement. Because if you move from Cape Town, where the epicenter is, or Gauteng, or Eteguini, and you keep going home, which may be in the Eastern Cape, or KZN, or Limpopo, or Northwest, every weekend you keep going, you may be taking the virus to places which do not have high numbers. And if we keep moving interprovincially, we may end up with the whole country being red. And that's not what we want. And that's why we limit the interprovincial movement. It's the same as we limited the international movement. We closed our borders because people were going in and out of other countries were bringing the virus, or people were coming to visit us, were bringing the virus, uh, even unknowingly, and then they tend to be positive and they spread. Now we've closed the outside borders. Now our boundaries within our provinces may act like that as well. May act like that if we keep coming to Gauteng and back, or Eteguine and back, we may be spreading the virus in areas where the, the virus is not so much. So we must understand that every action that you are taking, what is underlying is trying to cap the accelerated spread of the virus. So as you can see, the orange parts are also parts where the spread is there they are second to the red spots. The yellow parts are third to the, to the red and the orange spots. And then the blue are fourth. They are number four in terms of the spread of the virus. So I think that um, shows you exactly where we are. So the whole country is going to be level four. But there, there may come a time where we would differentiate the levels. There, would come, there may come a time where a particular area may be on level five, but while other areas are on level two or level three, as you can see those colors. But for now, we were all on level five and we are all going to be on level four. So that must guide us. So it's important then to remember that the lockdown will continue even under level four, but it will be easier because those who will be going to work, there will be more going to work than in level five. But because we still have the lockdown there will even be a curfew. The curfew means when you come back from work, you stay at home. It doesn't mean that now that some may be working after work, they can go everywhere. You come back home. And we will explain, when you go to work, the sanitizers must be there at home or washing of hands with soap all the time. When you go to work, you must sanitize. At, when you enter transport, sanitization is important. But when you leave your house, you must have a cloth mask. It's mandatory. It's going to be mandatory to use a cloth mask as you step out of your home, going anywhere. Now we know that these masks may not be easily available for now, but if you don't have a mask, you can use a scarf to cover your nose and mouth. You can use your t-shirt. 
On the health website, they also tell you how to make your own mask at home. So you'll have to have your nose and mouth covered in public. Thing that we, we must understand. So nobody should say, no, I couldn't get a mask. The surgical mask and the N95 and all those masks we leave for the health workers who are in the front line. And maybe people who deal with mortuaries who are also in the front line. But for all of us, a cloth mask. Homemade, bought, if you don't have, you put whatever you have. My scarf here can be a mask. So nobody uh, should have an excuse. And I had a cloth mask, it's only because SAPC said they couldn't hear me properly, so I had to take it off. But anything that covers you, protects the others when you cough or talk, you are protecting the others, but you're also protecting yourself from their droplets. So let's do that as we go to work. Social distancing is critical at home, outside, at work, even those companies that are going to open, they must observe all these health uh, imperatives. If they don't, then they shouldn't open. And that's why it was said before they open, they must send a team, a small team, that's going to go there and make preparations for all this. And it's critical because industry must stick to the guidelines. Because if you take shortcuts and maybe trying to save money, you may lose more money when that company or that factory has to close because there are people who are infected. They must be screened for temperature, for cough, for any symptoms, flu-like symptoms, the symptoms that we know are related to coronavirus. And if any of the worker has that, those symptoms, they can't they can work, but they must be tested. So screening every day when people come to work is very important for the protection of the workforce, for the protection of the people you interact with, because if you go to a supermarket, you interact with people there. So it's for all, everybody's protection. The masks are important. Social distancing is important. So we must just stress this. And what we want to see we want to see the whole country uh, being blue or even further than blue. Further than blue, it will mean there is hardly any, any infection and life goes back to normal. But as long as we have those red spots, and remember that those red spots are where the majority of the population is. They may look small, but that's where the concentration of the economy is in those red spots. But more than that, that's where the concentration of economic activities are. So it's a big challenge to balance because that's where the infections are, but that's where the biggest number of the population is, and that's where most economic activities are. So it's very important that when we open up the economic activities a bit more, the strict adherence to health, public health instructions is adhered to. The question of gatherings, social, cultural, religious gatherings are out, weddings, they are still out in level four. The only exception is still the funerals. And of course at the workplace. 
but other than that, gatherings are still not allowed. And as I said, people can exercise under very strict conditions. And those will be put in the regulations and directions. But it will exclude any organized activity. It will exclude all the recreational facilities, gyms and all that, it's out. So we must understand that. And transport will also be there because people need to go to work. The taxis will be there because people need to work, but the protocol, health protocols must be adhered to masks, sanitizers, sanitizing the taxi after loads, after taking a load. And that's very important. And the 70% capacity will be kept. As the economy opens and more people go to work, the Minister of Transport will then announce the change of times and whether we are adding buses and what the conditions will be. And if the trains have to be used, that will be announced at that time and the conditions will be announced. The, the transport is, support, is a supportive industry to all the economic activities, but it also can be a source of infection if we don't keep to the protocols because people are there in bigger numbers, close, so that's why masks are mandatory, sanitization, and all that. Of course, e-hailing, as it was allowed in level five, it's still allowed now. Private cars, but the numbers still remain as level five. No more than three people in a private car. And if that has to change, it will change when the situation goes to a, a lower levels where we say the risk is now lower, maybe level two, level. So for now, those three in a car, not more, and 70% in the taxi, inhaling the same. So, the most important thing is now to unlock a bit of the local production for local consumption and for export. That's what you are opening up the economy for. But also for purchasing of things that may be necessary for the well-being of people. So when we looked at industry, we looked at what is the risk of transmission in that sector and what measures could be taken to make sure that the risk is mitigated. We also looked at what is the in impact on that sector when the economy, on the, the risk on that sector if it remains closed. But we also looked at the sectors in terms of their value to the economy, including its contribution to GDP, employment, export, earnings, and all the value chains. But we also looked at promoting, promotion of community well-being and the livelihoods of, of the vulnerable. Maybe I'll explain that because it might seem strange that we also looked at promotion of community well-being. But you'll recall that on level five, we had to open up the issue of uh, baby goods and children up to toddlers. That's part of the well-being of communities. And you 
we know that we are going into winter now. Uh, in a few weeks or a month, the temperatures will drop and people will be cold. So children will need winter clothes. Adults will need winter clothes. So we, we will have to open that up, irrespective of the other three areas, because people do need winter clothes. Children do need winter clothes. We may need heaters. So that's how we had to look at the promotion of community well-being as well and livelihoods. Because if people don't have warm clothes and it's winter, they will easily get flu. And if you get flu and coronavirus, it's not such good news. So we we'll try and make sure that we do that. And of course, the levels, when we look at the levels, we, when we look at the levels, we said there are five levels. Um, the five levels, starting with number five, that's when the economy, sorry, that's when the health is not ready the low level of readiness should the spread go very fast. So when we get to that, combined with the high speed or accelerated increase in infection, that's the level that we call five. Because it means the high increase with the low level of a readiness or capacity in the health service creates a problem. It overwhelms the health service. Level four, which is just slightly lower than that, is when you still have a moderate increase, but you also have moderate readiness in terms of health. So that combination is still not good because it means that if the increase were, if the infection were to slightly increase, then you will get into trouble. So level three is when you almost are in the middle, moderate to mild, but your Readiness is also um, mild or moderate. Level two is when the increase infection is low or mild, and your readiness is also not that high. Level one is where you have low infection and high readiness. That's where we want to be. Level one is where we want to be, where there is low infection and high level of readiness. Level five, we want to move from it because level five is where there is high infection and low level of readiness. So those are the levels that we're looking at. Now we're at level four, and that's why I said to you, we can swiftly move to level five if the infection accelerates because we are not at a point where we say you are at a point of high readiness everywhere. So that might, but if we, if we keep to all the things we need to do, we might stay on level four and eventually go to level three. So, I've talked a lot about what we need to do in terms of employment. Where are my slides now? Uh, 
So we are now going to just Okay, I've explained the what we what we have what the systems that we have used, system one. That's how we got to the levels. So we call them alert levels. So I will not deal with that much. I've dealt with it and the industry I've dealt with and the health. So those are the levels as you can see. So where we want to be really is level one, where there is low spread and high readiness. And as I said that when we test, the rate at which the proportion of the population is tested must increase. That's why we're increasing our testing. But we, it's better if those people who are tested, that the positive tests don't increase too much. The proportion of, the, of, the, of those who are tested don't increase too much. But also the rate of fixed makeshift hospitals, quarantine areas, per thousand population, that's how we measure whether we are ready or not. And of course, the rate at which the proportion of hospital beds is being utilized for COVID is increasing. If the rate is lower, that's a better place to be. And the industry, I've, I've, I've explained, and we are also saying, according to WHO, and also according to our own scientists, you remember when Professor Karim spoke, he said, workers, if possible to work at home, work at home at all times, whether it's level four or five or three, if you can work at home, work at home. But if we have to bring people to work, which has to be done, those who are age 60 and above must work at home as much as possible and must remain at home. Why? Because they are the most vulnerable to this COVID. The younger you are, the less serious the COVID disease will be, even if you get infected. The younger you are, the milder it is. And maybe you will even be symptomless, which is why this problem, why coronavirus is a big problem, because there are lots of similar, symptomless people who are walking around, nobody knows they have the virus, they don't know they have the virus, but if they spread it to older people, the older people are most likely going to have symptoms and they are most likely going to have more serious symptoms. And the mortality rate from 60 above increases. <clears throat> and of course, those who have comorbidities, that is other diseases, whether it's diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, cancer, other immune suppressing uh, diseases, you have a problem, TB, lung problems, then if you have that already and then you get COVID, then it's a, it's a serious combination. And that's why we are suggesting that those who are over 60 work at home as much as is possible and be kept at home as much as is possible. And of course, uh, in terms of income, there should be engagement with the employers and UIF in terms of how they can be compensated. And as I said, workplace protocols, 
health protocols must be kept, surveillance, testing, screening must be there all the time. And even the things that we have taken for granted, biometrics, unless you are going to put your finger, clean, finger, sanitize, finger, sanitize, it might be better not to use it. Because if one person is carrying corona in their finger and they leave it on the biometric place and somebody puts their finger, they'll take it with them and many other people will end up infected. So it's very important that we ensure that we look at all those things in detail and how they can affect health. That's why even in funerals, we have limited the number, but even limiting the number is not enough. We have to change the culture. Because if you are closing the grave and you are exchanging spades or shovels, then somebody leaves corona on that spade, probably all those who have touched that spade might end up with it. That's why it's important to sanitize your hands, to put a mask on. Even after the funeral, we tend to have bath food and we serve it, in, serve it in a buffet style. Then we put one spoon for everyone to dish. If it's rice, there's one spoon for all 50 of you. Now, if I'm the first one or the third one or whatever, and I have coronavirus, and I take that spoon, I dish, the next person will end up with it. So that's why sanitizing all the time is so important. Wearing a mask is so important, but also trying to do away with those practices that actually encourage the spread of the virus. In some of our cultures, when we come back from the grave, we wash hands in one basin. Those, cult those practices must be changed because if we wash hands in one basin, we may be putting coronavirus in the basin and other people may get it. So there are so many culture change things that we'll have to address with this coronavirus. So there we are just stressing what should happen in business in that slide. Identify the workers that are vulnerable in age and comorbidities. Safe transport of the employees. Screening as you enter the workplace every day. And testing those who may have symptoms. Sanitizing, face masks, protective equipment. Uh, good ventilation in the workplace, even in canteens. We can't sit in the same way as we've been sitting in the canteens. We have to change, make sure there's social distancing, nothing more than less than one and a half to two meters apart. So all those things are culture change practices we have to change that because the culture of the workplace must also change. Workers can come and say, oh, I haven't seen you in such a long time. They hug, no. And they kiss and they, that have to stop. Whether you have seen that person or not, if you want to really greet and with touching the person, you can do it with your elbow or with your feet. But we should just try to avoid maybe high or something. But touching is the thing of the past. At the workplace, public place, no. So these are some of the things that we have to do. And we are suggesting that companies that have big workforce must test randomly, besides the screening of every worker as they come in. But they must also test, just to ensure that we are not sitting with a lot of 
as symptomless people who are just quietly spreading the virus. Because if the virus spread in a workplace, that workplace needs to be shut down. So it's, it's very important to ensure that we keep to those things. So we will be putting out regulations and we will be uh, giving the sectors, unions and others the document so that they can make comments but also be prepared for what is to come. Uh, Minister Patel will go and explain around the sectors what are the things that are changing. That's the important thing to know what change what is changing from five to four. But I want to just also emphasize that coronavirus is a collective challenge. It's not government, it's not Department of Health, it's not individuals, it's not industry, it's collective challenge. That will require shared sacrifices to achieve the impossible goal of going to level one and zero. It seems impossible, but it will be possible if we take this as a collective challenge. But also remember, we have to make some sacrifices. It's not punishment, it's sacrifices that we must make for our country, for our economy, for our fellow citizens. And the last reminder is also that it's not the health measures that will destroy the economy. It's the virus, the pandemic. So if we don't stick to the public health imperatives, it will be the virus, because if the virus spreads in the workplace, the place will shut down. So we mustn't think, oh, these restrictions are the ones that are destroying the economy. No, it's the pandemic itself. So we must stick to all the things that would limit the pandemic. And Jangobu Monga Mail, Ebese, Emezeli Luguti. E locked down le Le Simo Ebesic Son. A Siso took Shinjanjiganan. Godwa Asivua, a goose wooty, Jangoba Siso Suga. We level his son, see a level his scene. Segua Lala. Uncle Mutunjim says, Inda imemeze lilu kuti sizologu adjusta kangane sipega nje ukuthi umngozi bungakuphi si adjuste kangane silungise kangane so uzoba ne nokushintsha nje kangane kusukela ku5 kuya ku4 kodwa ngoba isimo asikashintsha kukhona izinto ezingezushintsha okufanele sizisho nje Sakal, sing as a sitting clambing with his clan, house, or business, cooling, healing, she say, the woman, gamma tongue, and put the mean car, going in jail. Ask a zoo vagashelan. Sisazo salikai, Upumekai and Goba, we are seventeen. Upumekai and Goba, we are got over Taylor, no more for no moody. Upumekai. Ngoba uyothengu kudla ubuye loko kudla uzokupheka la ikhaya kudli eh akeze uba nje kamaxhanxa asikeze uhamba nje siyothengu utshwala sikhululeke cha akeze uba khona le yonto asikeze uhamba futhi 
Sivagashe la mapondo, suge KZN, uti kama njengi pege, khautengi, kama njengi pege, eka apaka, aike zugwe nzega leyo. Uhambo nzo bakona, oluaba sebenzi, lapo in kampani zabo, ezifulaga busha, bezo suga lagate bekona, babu yele msebenzi. Uhambo olinga bakona, Manga begu nesimo, esinga saz, esinga chwailegile. Noma gu nesimo, so mwabo. Nakoni mwabo, kusaya ishobo, ezi setuze, ingane, o baba, omkulu, pela, agabi, fulelu, anjoku, to mzala, no mzala, ka mzala. Ka. Kusei simo, esi sakinile, gobi simo sekiwane, aska shinti kakulu. Sishinji le sona, koto aiga kuru. Abanda bazo vunye lwa futu kamba, ila abo, tamba base benza, eha uting, koto ababe bechala empumalang, noma bechale northwest. Labo bazo vunye lwa koto bazo fanele kuti babe ne pebit, abai tolai. Ne inganze skoli, skole mas, i, skole mas ezfundi, ezfunda, Kwenye province kutoa sala kwenye zehamba zonki nzuko na zozo fanya zidene permit. Inda ba yoku yoku zjoke jima, agezui we jimi, agezui we maklapi ngu si organize. Asko asno organize so o makelo anja agez organize inzio kijima kwa uzoba. Uk exerciser si zogusho mte tuene so ukipa ukutikzo wenze gaganjani kote aguzo ba strict ube limited goba isimo askavu asku usho food uguti ugo bebele ganje si enje ma tavern si ma parent si ma Ewe ndawe nzogu ule ma restaurant. Ne mti imbi. No ma imi ipi mti imbe shanga nisa bantu. Aiga funyelu. No go shala. E ma restaurant aga funyelu. No go ya gupi. Aga funyelu. Aga panje ma uye msebe nzini. Uyo tengu gula. Uyo uya espezela. Kutogotela. No uyo tengi miti. Exerciser, gapan, gapan, what is so simple, so she paid. A seguish on Jelogo, good act, and over a funeral with a band to back up and with a eye, manji, segu right, the so went and no mind. Sizo went to Woody Foot, Mark William Sebenzin, Gubernes Cart, Longa Gugazo, Puma, Mouse William Sebenzin, Uye Kai. Shall you eat, Use Kai? Kapanje maula baba sebenza na sepsuku. Pinde shayu 8 kuzi yo shayu 5 xen, sekai. Yo zupume ngobu hapi, uya hapi M7 zini, no miyote nguguza, no ma uya katokotela. Kubadilege kakulo, maupu ma ekai. Mause sekai, fanile njalo, shalu kezi zanta zako, nga manzi nentipi, no ma nge sanitize. Maupu mekaya, aupumu njenga aminji. Upuma, ikala no mlomo, livali. Livalue imaski, yendu wangu. Umuti, ay angazi nzo itola pindu wangu. E-health, kui website, habu bapa lili kuchunga zenze laga njane ya ki maski. Kwa tumunge na ayo leo maski. Unga tata no mai no na unales kafunji. Unga puma njengiti. Segu i maski. No mi tishe tendala. Segu i maski. Kobok bale kile. Ugutu. Unga pefumulele. Unga kweselele. Unga kulumela matako. Akashele kubandu. Na abongo gunjalo. Akufunegu guti mabe kuluma. Mabe kweselele. Mabe tumula. Batimlele kwe. Siya vigilana. 
Goba ne sifu, sishu bambi san. Uktanda anu zuilan. Gobe ngwenzayo. Ngak pilis. Goda fte ngwenzayo. Ngak bulal. Na ugwenzayo gungang pilisa. No magungang bulal. So lezo zimo. As gashinti. Fut manje. Sek inaga kulinda by a mask. Sek faneleng empelang empela. Wonku muntu. Maksuge lanje. Gulwe slan. Wonku muntu pumendli. Fanele pumene mask. Maye pumela ngapati. Igo gesichi domunge nayo, sebenzisa logo nayo, onago, uvali kala, uvalu mlogo, upume, wenze luguti, uvigele, abanyabandu. Ngoba senze lani, senze luguti, e, lesifo, singa njondlobala ngokshesha. Ngoba maslo njondlobala ngokshesha, kuba nabandaba ninga batingi ipezele. Ila pogi nkingi zoba kona ngobi ipeze la zetu azu kwa azu bata tabongi. Asfuno toko tila bafige ezinge nilabe sebezo keta kutubani o, 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 o fawe mshini nubano nga fawe. Noma nga bebe itinga bubabili noma bubatatu la bubantu. Sifunu kuti noma skupura in, 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 in le sifu skupure ganane singa njujuba linge sifinini. Senze luguti nga so songi skati Makona banta batingi special, by toli mpete, by toli mshini, bagwa suksisa gala. Engi ndo, klame nbezu ilo profesa bekulumu kuti, kubajabu lile, kesimo so kuti, lesimo se lockdown, esingabufu meli no chwala, senzu kuti eipezela, Abanta baza ziyo, ipeze la zika hulmeni. Kulwe san, kumkebelu, kesodo, kweli kasi. Kwele abanta bali mele, aba kwa zene, aba tubuliwe, aba repiwe, kwele yonki nchobo yendo. Wenu ngafigu kuula nji, utinu ufele espeze, kubwa asikwe space. Imshini le, itatwa ilabantu ule, nchiziwe kwa ziwe, Zangu utapili iswa adengi iswe theater, iswe egu, we ICU. So, maunga haya kule ipezele. Unga tabang chukwe njindao. Maunga haya para, uye Steve Bigo, uye pigle nchugu. Nanga ma weekend, unga tabang chukwe njindao. Koba asiko leso si munga kulu. Na mapo isa ya sichelu kuti, ibalo, zabanda babu lewe. Zabanta ba tutuli, waba kwazi, waba repiwe, zeslega kuru. Se atandu kuti njengo bakse na lesifu, sistri inele sosimo. Sistri inele sosimo, ngoba isona simo ngempela, okufanele ngabe siksona si ilizwe la, kunga shigucho nga ma weekend, eipele la inkinga. Kuse kisugo otoko tela ba pesheya, Bezo praktiza i emergency treatment la kuba enda wenzabo ai kolendo ekona la South Africa. Agesi zamu kutingembela singa bi isizwe estume nguvuti si akwaz ana si abula la ana si arepa ana si nzani kulesi mo ebesi kona zonge lesi ndo bezeli si afisi nguvuti si pindi sale. Igoge siti Goba seg level 4 As kwa zu vula yonki indu Si vula inte vulua Yo gashi gashi Uvulua isi moso mnoto Na kona Ngenze le sele gile Ay uti vele vulua nji Ngenze le sele gile Ezo gwenzu uti Si kwa zi ukbalanzu uti Isi mo Se korona singa kubegi mokshesh kutu mnoto na ubukala kusebenza. Imboni zibezikala zivula. Kutu wafuta ngiishu kuti uma imboni noma tina sabasali noma ubani uma singa itatile mteto esi nigwa i health abeze mpila basichel kutikufanele si zenza. 
umas ngai tat, si zenze la nomi ganjan, kungenze gale sifo, si bone in numbers si zlonjoba langok shesh. Umas zlonjoba langok shesh, uhulmeni, gege, angabaze, uguti abuyele, level five. Mais je m'ouvre mes nebuyer la level five que je suis buyer la gueule ça c'est mon sokal. In da oge zengu pain la in number sabantaba na le si fozin kulga kul ila matolo pa ma kule si tama metro ila poge la in number ziko kakul. God wa futi ila po la singaga. As Nagash we are in a state of high readiness. As Nagash Kuti, Isimo said to Sessis Lungele, no Missy PC. Go with him, Pig. Gaza, I know Jangoban Boni, Leguakiwama, makeshift hospital, Nani, Nani, Nama quarantine. Got us Gaffi, Gazing, and Las Gatti. I know Missy for Snagan to Balaganjan, Sizoba, right? Gawoge, Ego City. Akfunega kanjo kusuwe wenye provinsi ya geni. Koba mausubu hili katu yeli mpopo katu ye KZN suzo sebenza kauteng. Ama weekend, pela sondo, agu ushutfanelu enu wana kwa labanto, haba yeli mpopo, haba zubu ya nge sondo, agu kolongo. Entry, awazu kwa labanto haba ya KZN, ya se Eastern Cape, Agfanelanga njama highway ya kwa labanta abafagasha ayunga ma weekend. Masu ubu hili, la ubu yele konu zotala kona, koze kishi uguti. Segea fulelu wa emanje ukamba. So lezi ndo zbalegi ilega kulu. Magiwe msebenzin, kufanele yonki ndo ilandelu. Ngoba umunga ilandeli, umkash, enga ilandeli, mtetu ya yeze mpili. Zo valwa leo ndao. Aizu valwa imtetu yeze mpili, izu valwa hii virus, ngo bi virus izu, izu onge, nagba sebenz, fanele kufalo. So kubalegi iluguti, so onge senzo kufanele skwenz. Uguzu mnotu kalu guti, abakash benzo kufanele, tina senzo kufanele. Uma senza gashe yonki indo, nesimo, sale COVID, singa njundubali, singa wazu guti, Pinde kufulege food, siye level 3. Umangabe singa wenzi, futi ngo wenzi kutisibuye leg 5. Ushuti kuse zanje nzi tu mpili, kutisi ak 3, masuga ku 4, no masalala ku 4, no masaya ku 5. Kuse zanje nzi tu kutisi nzani, siya ilande li mteto kwa kufanele. Egbalege kakulu, kakulu, kakulu logo. Uma si inga wenzi logo, si buye la kufaifu. Kodo afutu buye la kufaifu kuinguzi, ngoba ngenzu kuti, ii ii pete la zetu, zinga wazu kutata wongu mtu, oti nguzi isu. Abanda batala, abane mnyaga, Ea mashumi ayis tupa gea pezu. Ogo mteto wana bekfani basa lekaya. Umabe wazu kusebenze lekaya banga sebenze. Kanti wongu mundo wazu kusebenze lekaya kufunega sebenze lekaya. Upumu ye msebenze ingoba msebenze wakunga kufumelu kutu sebenze lekaya. Kotwa lababa ne mnyage ya mashumi ayis tupa gea pezu. Ngoba. Leliki wane, liba na manta kakulu kubone. Weno se mngani, inga ne mngani ya skolo 4-5 years. Kwa sinis kata abazi noguti baya kuhu. Kwa taliko na leliki wane. Tlambe bando mkusangia no mngani, nunga tingno kutupaye kato hotele. Kwa tumto mtala, ukoko, no mkulu, no mmuto nezi nizi ifo. Jengo... Hai hai, njengu mbaktui hai hai. Aba no shugela, aba ne kenza, aba ne sifo sesfuba o asma, nezi nyi zifo. Uma kareli korona lapo, wedu na le zifo. Isi imo sibap kaira kulu. Ute nutingi spezlela, wesinis katutinga 
ucinodingu kufa kwemshini ya AICU. Manje masa beba ninga kulu. Kuzo shugutabanya bezu guazu kufinyelela ule mshini banga sizagari. So higo siti kufanele nga sosongi skati. Zinga sifumeli le sifo kutisambe siti. Kufanele si sifumeli kutisambe ganani, sambe ganani. Logo kuse zanti nzitu. Nabe, nabe zempilo baya za mugu screen na kutesta kukuti ngempela siwazi ukupega na nade sifu. Na semu sebe nzini la baba na ma baba sebe nzaba ningi fande ba teste. Kota wongu mtu fanda screen kushutu upegu kuti umsebe nzi maifiga agana high temperature, aga kwekeli agana zonjeli simo eh, so mkushane gobasi afana nese korona umena aso kufaneka test wibuna gali kutunani. Lezo zimo, zibaliki. Asika vagasheli umakeluane, asika vagasheli ilobo, sisaibu sebenzini, sibuye. Funugu kutizelela logo. Kwa baba inye, ibuna ngatiba kaba ngutima sektuwa level 4, au, se, sekshaile, se, seguga matanga, ka, akzubanjari. Ele sime spegene naso, sinzima, mshaba wongu spegene naso, kodwa, uhulmenu wetu, uye watati nyate lue ingata, e ingala, usakala, higo ngati, asinjonjobali kakulu. Kodwa nyomba sovula ganani mnoto, higo sovula ganani ganani, senzelguti singafigi lapo, nase sinjonjobala kakulu. Minangi engitima mbuga, Umabona gute, mbono kwenze kwa manya maswe, iti nje, hey, asenze ni konke, so kuhulmenu iti nje, asenze ni konke, singa kwenza, guze singa figi, ule sasimu. Yebo, so nisifo so kubega, bako so bakona ba ningana, bazo banaso, so bakona bazo shona, koto asfunu kuti, sifige kila wama zinga, iswabona kwa manya maswe. Gagoge asbambisa nini? Intele lule. Intele lo yetu songe. Aiga kulmeni. Aia mingetu. Aia kowetu. Ya bakashi, ya basebenzi, ya uwonku mundi. Intele lo. Intele lo yogo ifunuguti banji swani. Intele lo ifunuguti kube netisiplini. Intele lo ifunuguti kube kona. Esi tanda ayoko tasinga wazu kwenza. Sikube na ma sacrifices. La ma sacrifices awe skates nane, uguzi skates kulu, ilu ulele sifo, sipinde skulu leke. Si azi futukuti le sifo, si zvezi linte iningi, ezi inga agila gulelizwe letu, inta ala, ukusupega, wentulega we msebenzi. So onke lezo zinto, Uhulmen godwa ute koni imzamo niyazi umongamelu imemezele. Ngeso ntilzayo iyo kazwa gabanzi. Godwa nje, engilishia na uguti. Asbambisa nini. Sibe ne disipline. Siwavu mama sacrifices eskates nani. Kona siyo kulega iskatesi tengi abonga. Sibo sibo nge kungongoshe, sibo nge kakulu, na kubala leli emakaya. Sese zao negeza ge umunyo ngongoshe. Oso zo strazela kuti njengo basi vula gangane, njengo basi siya kulewe liye sine, besi kulewe liye slanu, so besi kulewe liye sine, ngaru slanu lo ozayo, wa umagupela le date, le yange date, lo level 5, esese guona. So ke, sisesa utela ke, mwukulu kuzitoba, kuti u minister upatel, Eze nga pambili, azo staze la utina iwa pila ma economic activities na ma sectors, azo kona uguvu lelega 
uh, could level four. Uh, without any further ado, again we have said to people at home, because we would like to reach everybody, uh, we don't want to reach only those that can understand English. Uh, if it was possible, we, we could have spoken in every language that is uh, an official language in our country, but we are trying the best we can. Having said that, we now call on the Minister of Trade and Industry and Competition, Minister Patel, to come and speak on the sectors uh, that will then be allowed to operate under Level 4 in a few days' time. And not tomorrow, by the way, and not after tomorrow, but in a few days' time after the, the after Friday, on Friday, in fact, on the 1st. The 1st is on Friday, on the 1st of May. Um, Mr. Patel, the platform is yours. We will, because you are coming with your computer, and we will save you. Thank you very much, uh, colleague, and uh, good afternoon uh, to uh, members of the media, to my colleagues, Minister Lamini Zuma, who's leading the work around uh, the national disaster uh, that has been declared, uh, and fellow South Africans. My colleague has set out the overall framework within which the return to work arrangements will take place. To recap the key messages, uh, we will have a risk-adjusted system that the President spoke about, consisting of three key elements. The first is a new alert system to measure the degree of risk from the highest being level five to the lowest being level one. Second, we'll have an industrial classification system to indicate the economic activities that will commence either completely or in part, and showing South Africans how they are affected by each of the levels. And finally, a new comprehensive public health and social distancing set of measures that will apply during the period when the virus is still in our society. Now, I thought perhaps we should start by, by indicating that the purpose of the new approach is to calibrate the level of openness with the level of risk. If we have high risk, there are fewer economic activities and less social movement. If we have lower risk, the economy is able to expand and more movement becomes possible. And so it allows us to restart uh, or increase as many economic activities as is possible given the level of risk. In putting the framework together for industrial classification, which I'm going to mainly speak about, we took four factors into account in determining what the proposals are of whether a particular factory or shop or office is able to open. The first thing we looked at is the risk of, trans, uh, of uh, transmission of the virus, the spread of the infection that is posed by a sector or a workplace, and and also the number of people who have to travel to work and the number of people who have to travel to the shop. So that is the one factor. The second factor we looked at was the expected impact on the sector of a continued full lockdown. How it uh, uh, affects the vulnerability of the factor, the economic uh, impact. The third factor was the contribution and the economic linkage of every sector to the broader economy. And we took into account factors like the contribution to uh, the GDP, the number of jobs, the multiplier effect of that sector on the broader economy, the export earnings, supply chain linkages. Does, how does one sector that does 
components affect another sector that does finish goods, and we looked at industrial policy goals. The promotion of community well-being was the fourth factor, and that of course goes to the question of livelihoods of the most vulnerable in our society. These factors have been applied to each of the different sectors in the economy. We took some numbers, quantitative measures, as well as some judgment calls, which are qualitative factors, in these assessments. I want to recognize that it's been a difficult and complex process and a hard balancing act. Every industry, every workplace, every worker wants to return to work. We all want to get South Africa working fully. But we need to strike a careful balance between getting to work as rapidly as possible and containing the spread of the virus and saving lives. We're also striking a balance between the four factors that I spoke about, as they are all important. And the new arrangements that government is uh, seeking to put into place will be based on a phased return to work. It's not everybody return to work on the same day. It will be phased in. We need to work as hard as possible, all of us, as South Africans, as companies, workers, organizations, consumers, to bring the risk level in the economy down. If we can bring the risk down below a level four, if we can get it to level three, even more activities open. If we get it to level two, uh, further activities open. So the big focus must be on trying to bring the risk levels down, and we can all play a role in doing so. The return to work of increasing numbers of sectors will bring greater levels of workplace testing. So in the large companies, it will now be possible to test workers. And so we'll get more reliable, more comprehensive information that we feed into our national system. And that allows us to say, in this particular area, we are now confident that the risk levels are low and we can in fact move that area to a lower level of risk and more activities can open. So that's the critical thing we're trying to do. We also want to use the phased approach for another reason, and that is to enable firms themselves to get the workplaces ready for a period of COVID. The experts tell us that we need to brace ourselves, we need to prepare ourselves that over the next uh, six, eight months, the virus is still going to be very active in society. And so we can't simply uh, get back to work as if the virus is not spreading. The workplaces themselves have to be changed, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. The focus principally in this phase, level four, that will commence on the 1st of May, it's International Labor Day, is about restarting core parts of the economy. We're con considering a more measured reopening of more retail in order to continue the limit on movement in the society. As has been said, the virus doesn't move. People move. When many people move, the virus moves rapidly and spreads very quickly. In moving from level five, which is the highest level of the lockdown, this is where we are now, to level four, we need to strike a careful balance. If we move too fast, we, are, we risk a, a rapid rise in infection, and we will find ourselves with many ill people, many more deaths, and we have to return immediately to level five, which is detrimental to the economy itself in the long term, in addition to the fact that we would lose people whose lives otherwise could be saved. If we move too slow, we prolong the economic downturn and we risk that parts of the economy will not be able to continue. We know that we recognize that it's real. So we must move forward, but we must do so with a degree of caution, or as the president has put it, in a risk-adjusted manner. The proposal uh, that we will be putting to sectors uh, today uh, follows discussion that we had with businesses, with firms, with organizations of, uh, of uh, individual firms, but also with the trade union movement. We've listened to comments by, by many uh, citizens, by 
comments that we've seen on social media, and we've taken that into account. The current essential service activities that operate under level five is already extensive. They cover many sectors already. All of energy and water, sanitation, and telecommunication infrastructure is currently uh, at work. So too is the health sector, food production, healthcare products, and hygiene products, as well as critical public sectors. Most of financial sectors are currently at work. Parts of retail, of mining, of manufacturing, of construction, of communications, parts of the media, some call centers, and, the, and parts of the public sector are at work. They will continue to operate when we shift to level four, but we will be adding additional economic activities to that list. With a change in the lockdown from level five to level four, as we move to that level, we estimate that it will enable uh, more than one and a half million South Africans to leave their home and go back into the workplace. That's roughly the additional number that we expect. The exact number, of course, will depend on many factors, on how many firms reopen, uh, on the final arrangements involving uh, sectors like education and so on. And it will be based on a framework that we're still developing for different sectors. Now, if we look at the economy as a whole, if we add these roughly one and a half million persons to those who are already working at the moment, it means more than four out of 10 uh, workers in the economy will, in phased ways, be back at work. That's just over 40%, depending on the final list of sectors and activities and the final schedules for education. We will, of course, release a firmer uh, estimate once the final list uh, of reopened sectors has been completed following the processes uh, that Minister Lamini Zuma has outlined. I want to turn to the new activities that uh, is proposed for reopening. In agriculture, uh, forestry and fishing, that whole sector will begin to reopen because that now will include logging uh, and forestry as well as horticulture, the transport of livestock, and uh, animal auctions, uh, of course, under clear social distancing uh, directions that will be issued. In manufacturing, there will be a further partial opening of the sectors. The sectors will not be open 100% during level four because we need to give firms an opportunity for a phase return to work. We need to begin to test the systems at factory gates, at work areas, in the canteens, in bathrooms, in the screening of workers, in transport, uh, in arrangements for those who have the symptoms of COVID-19. And of course, also to progressively increase the number of people who are on the road moving to work and moving from work. As a broad baseline, 20% uh, of all manufacturing workers will begin to restart during level uh, four, but some subsectors of manufacturing will have a higher number of workers, a higher proportion of workers who will be able to return progressively to work. Still not to 100%, but to more than 20%. They include uh, the following sectors, children's clothing and winter clothing. We know imp how important it is for families to be able to get warm clothing. Part of fighting the virus is uh, to avoid the cold. Blanket manufacturing for a very similar reason and other uh, bedding and uh, computers and mobile phones so that we can enable more people to work from home. Uh, some car manufacturing and the components that goes into cars. Some manufacturing of cement and other construction material as well as hardware. Because as construction starts, they will need the stocks of these uh, basic raw materials that are, are required. And of course, stationary production, because we've got to begin to get ready for the return of, um, of uh, workers to factories where they'll need stationary 
and uh, down the line also uh, the arrangements involving higher education and, and, uh, and schooling in general. So that covers manufacturing. If we look at the shops, and uh, they are the retail uh, stores, the wholesale, wholesale stores, uh, some additional opening of retail uh, will, will take place in level four. We recognize that shops are a big vector of transmission. When you go to the shop, there are greater opportunities because you mix with so many people for the virus to spread. So we really want to appeal that visits to the shops be as infrequent as possible, only go when it's really necessary, and keep it as short as possible, and we have to maintain social distance and adequate sanitation arrangement in the various shops. When I'm talking of retail, I'm of course not only talking of the large supermarkets. We also mean here uh, the uh, reference to uh, informal trading uh, and to spaza shops. The categories of retail uh, sales that will be expanded include children's clothing, winter goods like winter clothes, blankets and heaters, stationery and educational books, tobacco products, uh, and personal ICT equipment. Those are things like computers and um, uh, 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 mobile phones and other home office equipment. I move next to mining. Mining has already uh, begun the process of workers returning to work. They do so in batches because of the large numbers involved. Not all workers in mining can go back at the same time. And my colleague, Minister Mantash, has already outlined how that process will work. In level four, the new addition is that those workers who work in open cast mining, in other words, not underground, uh, they will be able to go back in larger numbers. Again, in phases, but returning uh, in the period from the current 50%, uh, eventually over in phases to 100%. Services will also increase. From some professional services that will be required by firms that now open, so if a car factory opens in part, they may need people who, who do professional services, engineering services, accounting services, legal services, and so on. So those services will follow the opening of the economy in level four. But it also includes uh, other, uh, other key uh, services. And uh, I can draw attention to call centers will now have an expanded number of activities that take place. Uh, recycling uh, sectors will also reopen, including informal recyclers. Construction will have expanded activities. Previously, it was really critical maintenance and construction works. It will now be expanded to include civil engineering for public work projects. And these include water, energy, and sanitation projects. And we also will be bringing road and bridge projects uh, in during level four so that uh, in rural areas we can begin to attend to the importance of building new roads, maintaining roads. As regards restaurants and other places serving food, uh, restaurants and takeaways as, other, as well as other similar places will be open for delivery only. And that delivery means that the customer don't come to the shop or the um, takeaways, but the food goes to the customer. Because the experience all over the world has been that that is a better way of limiting the movement of people. So you won't be able to visit a restaurant uh, to sit down uh, or to fetch your food, but you can phone, you can make some other arrangement to online uh, and, uh, and ensure that um, uh, you are able to tap into the food that's available. It's an opportunity to create a food delivery network in townships as well. Now we've pulled out a few key areas. We will share a detailed document uh, with all the proposed sectors and what changes between level five and level four uh, with the sectors concerned. So we'll be sending that today still to business organizations, to trade unions, to uh, sector organizations. And uh, a copy of that will be available to members of the media at the end of uh, the briefing today. We will also produce a simple graphic, 
simple graphic that will uh, show in very clear ways uh, what is uh, envisaged in level four. What are the activities that will reopen? What are the social activities uh, that we as South Africans now will be able to engage in so that it's clear and it's, uh, it's something that uh, we, can, uh, we can all have an equal understanding of it. So what we've outlined today and what the document, the more detailed document will show is a phasing in of more parts uh, of the productive economy. But we are having to look at all of this through the spectacles of health to make sure that uh, the uh, level of infection is not spread uh, significantly, that we don't get uh, a, a huge pressure on our healthcare system with large numbers of people uh, getting into the healthcare system. We're going to do whatever is possible to try to limit that. The phased reopening of the economy is also an opportunity to support South African uh, made products, to buy local, because we've had a significant knock on our economy. There's no question about it. COVID-19 has hurt the economy, it's hurt jobs, it's hurt firms, small businesses, uh, township enterprises, larger companies, they've all been hurt. When we as South Africans go back to the shops and we buy locally made goods, we bring demand back into our economy and we help the economy slowly to recover. We're seeking to enable a greater level of working from home and to facilitate access to computing. So you'll see in the detailed arrangements that it really is facilitating a shift in many sectors to a more digital form of communication. As I indicated earlier, we're particularly focusing on primary sectors like agriculture and mining, forestry and, and so on, because they provide the input into manufacturing and they are the start of most value chains in our economy. The phased introduction is a, a good opportunity for workers and uh, managers to work together at the workplace, to get the workplace ready for COVID. So it means as smaller numbers initially come in, we can stress test the system, we can pilot it, we can see what works, what doesn't work, and it make the adjustment. We will be talking, as uh, uh, Minister Lamini Zuma indicated, uh, to businesses. Uh, over the weekend, uh, they will all have access to the, the documentation and they can provide us with their feedback and their comment. And we're going to work closely with businesses to ensure that the risk-adjusted approach can be introduced at workplace level. And that means the Department of Health, Minister Zweli Mkise will be playing a key role uh, to ensure that we have the right measures in place at workplace uh, level uh, to support uh, a, a COVID-resistant work environment, or one where we take every reasonable step to limit the spread of the virus. There's a role for sectors to develop partnerships with us in how we can bring the risk level in the economy as a whole down, and we can then see how can we move more rapidly to level three if we can get the rate of infection down and we can get the rate of testing up. We're also looking at partnerships with the private sector to strengthen healthcare facilities. The more healthcare facilities we have, the stronger those healthcare facilities are, the lower the level of risk in our society. The new arrangement will increase reliance on uh, new ways of doing things, new partnerships. It will strengthen the digital economy. And we recognize there are still many things in the South African economy that require physical delivery, uh, that people need to be physically in a factory to make something. So we want to work uh, together as, uh, 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 in partnership with workers, with firms, with everybody really, to get the a level of risk down so that we can as rapidly as possible get to level three. But we must always do so recognizing that human life is vital, is important, uh, and that we must uh, calibrate, we must adjust the level of activity with the level of risk. So that, that sets out the broad framework. As we've indicated, uh, members of the media will be getting more detailed documents, they're quite detailed, and uh, they will be the basis of, uh, of discussions, reflection, there will be feedback that we will get, no doubt, from 
particular sectors who will uh, perhaps give us some good ideas on how we can implement the new framework in a manner that will further reduce risk. And we will use that opportunity also to clarify some of the arrangements that would have to be in place at particular workplaces to ensure that we lower the, the risk levels. So um, to my colleague, uh, uh, Minister Mtembu, that sets out in broad terms the new approach uh, that the President spoke about, that Minister Dlamini Zuma uh, provided the framework for, and this gives a little bit of the detail. A document will be circulated uh, to the sectors uh, and uh, trade unions involved. We'll be getting feedback. We'll be make, taking all of that into account. And in the course of next week, having taken uh, into account uh, the, the feedback that we've received, the intention then is to publish this document, to gazette it together with the regulations uh, that would then apply, particularly in respect of level four, so that everybody knows for level four what is expected. So the feedback we're seeking in the next period is particularly around level four to enable us to move uh, swiftly with as few challenges and difficulties between level five and level four. So uh, thank you for the opportunity just to uh, outline the uh, approach on the industrial sectors. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Patel uh, and uh, Minister Lamine Zuma. I think uh, to the people at home, Abbasem Akai, the document, the very detailed document, is what we are going to upload both on our own government website as well as the coronavirus website after this. But also we are putting out that document as a way of showing the various sectors of industry what our thinking is and what therefore they can also put their views on the thinking of government. So it's also consulting with the various sectors of industry uh, on our thinking around this risk-adjusted approach. Having, that's why we have not had the full document because uh, we were going to sit here probably for how many days or weeks if we had the full document. So, but indeed, all South Africans will have sight, as the minister has said, of the full document immediately after this. We have outlined the broad principles that underpin the easing of economic activity under level four. Still of the lockdown, because the lockdown will continue, but we'll have various levels. We are now at level five, we are now proposing indeed a level four, uh, that all of us become level four under level four lockdown. We'll then have a level three, that would be good if all of us work together, as Mam Kosan said, and we all move from level four to level three of lockdown. And again, we all work together to move from level three to level two. And we all work together to move from level two of lockdown to a normal level which is level one. That's where all of us would like to be, where all sectors of the industry will be open, where all types of gathering will be allowed. That's where we'd like to be at level one. But for now, we are proposing a level four uh, easing uh, uh, of the lockdown that we are in now. Having said that, we will now open to questions and uh, any issues of clarity, we will start with those that uh, are calling in. Uh, can we have the first caller? On the line, we have Aseri from Capital Life. Hello, Aseri. Uh, hello. 
ਆਸਰ 